My name is Kamau Peer, and on behalf of the Translational Disease Modeling Group at Sanofi, I'll be presenting to you today a case study whereby we utilize quantitative systems pharmacology modeling to predict safety and efficacy of a tri-specific T-cell engager antibody for multiple myeloma before the first in human clinical trial. Multiple myeloma is a hematological malignancy characterized by the infiltration of abnormal plasma cells within the bone marrow and high systemic concentrations of myeloma proteins. Various treatment options for multiple myeloma exist, with T-cell engagers providing a promising therapeutic approach. These assets promote efficacy by redirecting T-lymphocyte cytotoxic activity towards multiple myeloma cells. Sanofi has developed a tri-specific antibody that interacts with CD3, CD28, and CD38 antigens to enhance both T-cell activation and tumor targeting. By selectively binding to sites on both effector and target cells, the antibody promotes T-cell-dependent killing of multiple myeloma cells. Due to the multitude of potential binding sites on both effector and target cells, the drug's mechanism of action is, however, very complex. The overarching goal of our effort was to develop a QSP model that integrates multiple myeloma disease biology with the tri-specifics mechanism of action to firstly de-risk first-in-human dose selection with respect to cytokine release toxicity across dose escalation levels, but to also identify a potential range of active doses for the drug. Model building was conducted incrementally, whereby we first developed preclinical in vitro and NHP models, with the latter finally being translated to a clinical QSP model. Leveraging an expansive set of in vitro data generated from cytotoxicity, proliferation, and activation assays, as well as cytokine secretion data from a modular immune in vitro construct or MIMIC human immune platform, we have developed and calibrated an in vitro QSP model that characterizes a variety of dose-dependent responses following incubation with the tri-specific antibody. The final model simulates drug administration, the reversible and independent binding of the antibody to antigens on both T and target cells, cell synapse formation, T cell activation and killing, as well as cytokine production. Simulated output from this trained model is well aligned with the observed multiple myeloma cell killing, T cell proliferation, and cytokine release data for four representative cytokines. The developed in vitro QSP model was further refined to represent a sample of peripheral blood from a human multiple myeloma patient using reference immune and tumor cell circulating counts. The system was then subjected to simulated administration of increasing doses of tri-specific antibody and cytokine concentration was quantified after 24 hour incubation period. The panel to the left shows the predicted dose dependent changes in cytokine levels with increasing doses, while that to the right depicts cytokine fold increase from the corresponding measured Mabel cytokine levels. With the safety threshold for cytokine release identified as a 250 fold increase indicated by the horizontal red dash line, we were able to predict a maximum safe first in human dose that was well aligned with the proposed clinical dose escalation plan. Next, we developed a two-compartment NHP QSP model describing baseline cellular and molecular processes, their dynamics following treatment, as well as the drug's pharmacokinetics in both the blood and bone marrow compartments. In addition to the previously mentioned key processes described in the in vitro model, we incorporated intravenous drug administration, antibody compartmental biodistribution and clearance, as well as cell migration between the blood and bone marrow compartments. With some of the key model assumptions stated below, it is important to note that while individual cells can reversibly traffic between compartments, two cell synapses mediated by tri-specific antibody binding cannot migrate. Incorporating the previously parameterized processes described by the in vitro model into the NHP model structure and updating the system to appropriately represent blood and bone marrow biology, we then calibrated remaining unknown parameters to capture the measured PKPD responses across three dosing levels. Representative plots are shown to the right, where we depict alignment of our simulated responses shown by the solid blue lines with that of the measured data illustrated by the open circles with error bars. In addition to the drug PK, our model captures the characteristic initial rapid decline of T cells and their subsequent rebound following T cell engager treatment. We then translated the NHP model to a human QSP model. Following integration of the prior in vitro and NHP model calibrations into the model, it was then updated to include a multiple myeloma disease progression submodule. Multiple myeloma cells were added to both the blood and bone marrow, and we implemented a literature-based tumor growth function. Finally, we adjusted the blood and bone marrow cell composition, their counts and antigen expression levels based upon differences between species. 
By accounting for background therapy and variability in T-cell killing rates, we conducted a virtual clinical trial whereby we subjected in silico patients to increasing doses of tri-specific antibody and assessed efficacy based upon the percentage of multiple myeloma cells killed within the bone marrow. As shown in the figure to the left, though a range of efficacy was predicted for the human model, we were able to identify an active dose based upon internal and external criteria. On the right, we illustrate the effect of increasing doses on multiple myeloma cell CD38 receptor occupancy. While our model predicts the somewhat expected increase in occupancy with dose, it does suggest that low receptor occupancy is sufficient for drug activity. In summary, the developed in vitro QSP model was used to predict an optimum safe starting dose, which was aligned with that identified using the Mabel approach and supported decision making prior to the first in human study initiation. The predicted minimum active dose from the human QSP model supported first in human study design and the program was granted fast track designation with our models active dose predictions currently being confirmed in the first in human study. As possible next steps, the model can be adapted to describe potential subcutaneous dosing administration with the predictive ability to support a subcutaneous dosing plan. We wish to acknowledge the various colleagues across the diversity of groups within the company who contributed to the model building effort in a variety of ways. Their support ensured a timely completion of the objectives. With that, I conclude the presentation of this example. I trust that it was insightful. Thank you for your attention.